Hi right, guys, how's it going East Bay Anglers? And today we're talking all about spoons. We're talking about spoon fishing, how to, all the ways you can fish a spoon, your lure. And let me talk to you guys today about the most effective ways. And some of these not many people are really talking about for good reason, because they work extremely well. And a lot of people that are really on bites that are, you know, <laughs> really good, they're not sharing. And when it's over, or when it's toward the end and they realize that there's a, you know, it's a, the bite is changed, they might share with their buddies some of the stuff that they did, but it's over for the most part. A lot of times by the time you get a fishing report, the bite is so far from where it was, you know, the it might only be a week behind or two weeks that report, and the fishing is completely changed a lot of the time. But today we're talking about spoons and we're talking about different ways to fish them. The first way we're gonna talk about Everybody knows it. You just jig it. I mean, you can jig it slow. You can jig it, you know, in a moderate action, like a moderate pace. You can jig it more aggressive. You can jig it so it's like popping really hard and um, you're getting um, a higher lift, you know, sometimes popping it maybe two feet. Sometimes you're only popping it a foot. In the winter, as the water gets colder, the general rule to jigging or popping, yo-yoing a spoon is the colder the water, the less aggressive you go or start with, and the warmer the water, the more aggressive you jig the bait, um, the lure. So, spoons of all colors work extremely well, and spoons of all brands work extremely well. So another way you guys can work your spoon is by casting it and retrieving it. And this really works well depending on what you're trying to catch. It's not great when you're trying to catch bass, but when you're trying to catch rainbow trout or when you're trying to catch maybe pike or muskie or walleye or just different things, um, you know, it's effective. Other fish, not so effective on that cast and retrieve when you're retrieving it a steady retrieve is very good but sometimes you might if you're not getting bit try an erratic an erratic retrieve if you've tried both those play around with the retrieve speed go steady retrieve real slow go at a moderate pace go really fast at the same time try a stop and go approach try to burn it or stop or just you know steady pace and then stop and then right back to it so kind of like a pause but generally also stop and go type presentation works really well and another way we're going to talk about fishing a spoon which you guys don't hear a lot about and you know there's uh it's kind of a controversial way to fish a spoon, but basically you go really big and I like lake fork spoons. You can get them up, you know, six, eight inch size. Those are great. And you basically just in the winter, this is the dead of winter. It's cold. It's cold. You basically just barely lift that spoon up. You're not even going to have a flutter. You're just lifting the spoon. Um, you know, essentially that spoon part of it's still like right on the bottom, maybe, the, you know, and you're just lifting it up essentially. You're not actually lifting it up as in off the ground, but you're lifting the spoon um, up and then just dropping it. A lot of times if you're in an area where you know there's fish, in the winter time, these fish are, they're sluggish. And a lot of times you overwork that lure and it really just doesn't work well. So just lifting it up, but not really putting anything into it can be an excellent technique. Another technique we're going to talk about is going in, using your spoon almost like a jerk bait. If not sure if you guys if jerk bait fished or not but fishing a spoon um, in that particular, you know, two, one, three, one, one, two, one, three, we're talking cadences, get a bait caster, it works the best. 
you're able to kind of fish that spoon like a jerk bait. Now, when I do this technique, I like to have feathered hooks on the back of my spoons because it just seems to work better and the just catches more fish in general. When it, when it doesn't have that feathered hook, it's not nearly as effective when it's used in like a jerk bait. And, um, you know, you can experiment with different colors. Obviously, you already know your colors that are popular at your lakes, your fisheries, and your bodies of water. But spoons are very versatile, guys. You know, it doesn't matter. Go 132 ounce, 116. You can go an eighth. You can go a quarter. You can go a three eighth. You can go a half, five eighth, three quarter, one ounce. I mean, really, you can go any size. And a lot of times you want to pick a size that's gonna match the, the forage. So the average forage that these fish are focusing on, what they do is they key in on a size from whatever they're eating. Whatever the main food source annually at that lake is, they will key in on that size, that profile. They will do that. So, all right, we've talked about all that. So spoon fishing, guys, underrated absolutely productive sometimes so productive it's insane sometimes so hard you're just like what am i doing and at the same time this produces monster fish so you can catch just about any species of fish on a spoon it's really a cool thing now the last thing i want to talk about this is a different particular way to fish a spoon this is the last way, guys. Give you four already. This is the fifth way. And what you're going to do is you're going to get a weedless spoon. And you're going to throw it into grass that is sparse or um, some type of cover that's somewhat sparse um, or even more so a little bit more than, you know, some just some cover and, uh, you know, grass, maybe a grass line and just like ripping that bait out of the grass. But generally we're talking grass that's no longer than, oh, four and a half, five inches, four and a half. It really, it's, uh, but sometimes even, you know, up to six inches and, uh, you know, having it weedless allows it to go in, flutter into those weeds and then you're able to pop it out. But you're essentially getting a reaction bite because, you know, it's going in and it's just sinking in there and it's, you know, it's popping out. And a lot of times, you know, if you're not fishing areas that have a lot of structure, cover, grass, all that, you're fishing the wrong area with this technique. But this is basically throwing it in the grass and ripping it out of the grass that's my last technique and I generally use that technique in that mid to late summer period sometimes fall early spring it really depends but my favorite time is summer I hope this helps you guys if you're out there spoon fishing this is pretty much what you need to know now it doesn't matter freshwater salt water it applies don't forget tip your spoons tip them with any kind of plastics or maybe uh, something of that nature. Uh, put a lot of different oils or different attractants scents on your spoons or, you know, all these things are going to help you catch more fish. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for more.